Gmail.com. I'm here with Coach Aaliyah. We're here at CrossFit Advance. I want uh, Coach Aaliyah to go over. She's a former college collegiate rower and uh, she currently coaches rowing and uh, she's also a coach here at CrossFit Advance. And I'd love her to just to discuss some of the positions of, of rowing, what makes a good rowing stroke. Is it stroke or stroke? Okay, it's a stroke. So, and, uh, and then from there, we're going to kind of discuss some of the, the common faults that are seen and how that can lead to injury, and then maybe a couple quick fixes for uh, how to you know, prevent that before you get on the, on the road. Uh, so I'll have uh, Aaliyah take it away. Okay, so when you're first teaching some individuals how to row, whether you're a rowing coach or even a CrossFit coach or some other element that uses this aspect, there's something on the right side of the row, it's called the damper. The easiest way to think about it is in terms of resistance. Just set it all the way down to one. Least resistance. When you're teaching the beginners how to row, you don't want them to have that added element. You want them to solely focus on body positions and the smooth, fluid mo movement. Because rowing is all about fluidity and power paired together. Not one without the other. Okay, the next thing you would want all the beginners to be aware of are the straps, your foot straps, okay? So, they're adjustable, because everyone has different sized feet. You want them to make sure it fits your foot. So there's a strap right here. When I slide my foot in, I want it across, essentially, the ball of my foot. So if this is the ball of my foot right here, it's going to mirror that on top. Okay, so you're giving yourself something to have resistance with. Okay. It can be, if I have really small feet, I'm going to have this pulled up a little bit higher. It's easily adjusted. Okay. And if I have really big feet, I can also adjust it to that as well. Once you have your feet in, see how I can have space right between the foot stretcher and my foot? I want to eliminate that as much as possible. So I'm going to put tension on this. Now you can't even see my foot move, but it's moving inside my shoe. Really important to do because when you're when you get to the applying pressure, you need that, and you even need it for some of the movements, which is what you hear me talk about later. Okay, now we're going to review the positions. Okay, there are four positions I'm going to go over. The first one you can think about it as the fifth one, but it's not. It's the final position. It's called the finish of the stroke. Okay, so if I take the handle. Okay. I still have my nice lean back, my belly's tight, my head's neutral, just like I'm looking straight over the horizon. Okay, I want a proud chest, so that means my shoulders are going to be even with my head, okay, which is very important. That's how you know you're actually staying in the right position, okay. My shoulders, I'm up nice and tall, my elbow is going to be in line with my shoulder, and then my elbow is going to be in line with my wrist. So right now, it's nice and flat, okay, it's a, it's a stronger position. Mechanically and also for in terms of power. Okay, this is my starting position. This, the handle, should be right underneath your sports ball or right underneath your pecs. Okay, right where your bricks start to meet. Okay, that's where you end. This is called the finish. Okay, the next movement is arms away, or we'll just say arms, and it's out. Smooth out. Nothing moved in my torso, just my arms went out. Okay, and then I'm going to bring them back in. There's not a real strong pull, because it's just my arms. Nothing else has moved, so when I bring it back in, nothing else should move. Okay? So this is one position. Here's the finish. Here's arms. The following position is arms away, or arms and body, which means from my hip, I'm pivoting forward. Okay? My core is still nice and tight. My shoulders are over my body. My head has moved with my torso. Okay, my arms are nice and straight out. Okay. There's that position. So now they're just connected. Finish, arms, arms and body. My back is still nice and straight, so it's engaged. My core is what's holding me up. Okay, this is the, the next position is half slide. That means from here to my toes, half slide's in the middle. Okay? And then the fine position will be full. What I want to do when I'm telling someone to come up, 
So if I stick my fingers, if I'm the coach, and I stick my fingers in here and I say, okay, as you come up the slide, I want you to, I want to feel your foot press against my fingers. So you're squeezing them. You're using your feet to pull yourself up because you have the tension in your hamstrings. So you're resisting your momentum to go up. So essentially you're loading your muscles so when you drive back, you have power. Okay? So I'm going to pull myself up. You'll start to see if someone does it correctly. You'll see their shin, their calf, and their quad. You might be able to see their hamstrings start to show definition because it's really engaged. Okay, so right here is half slide. Okay? I'm in a nice triangle, not at my full slide yet. Okay? So here's my finish. Arms, arms and body, half slide. Okay. Even though we're only going half slide, I can make it one move. Okay? So from half slide, you have to pull yourself up the rest of the way. So I'm still going to engage. Okay, as I'm pulling up, I want to think about pushing my hips back. Okay? I never want my butt to come in line with my shoulder. Okay, because then I have lost the tension that I have loaded on my hamstrings. Okay? You can think about this in terms of a triangle. Hands, head, hips. Okay, if you drew lines on me, it should make a relatively decent triangle. Okay? So this is full. This is your full slide now. So here's my finish. Arms, arms and body. I'm going to pull myself up. Here's half slide. Here's full. So because everything's nice and tight, I can let go of this and still keep it tight if you're doing it correctly. I'm going to push my feet just like if you were doing a deadlift or trying to pick something up. You want the weight to go into the foot stretches. Okay, so my upper body and my lower body have to work together. So when I land in that finish position, timing should be perfect. Okay? So it's like a book. When my leg is straight, I'm already in my layback. This is my hinge. My hip is my hinge, so they have to pivot around together. My legs are longer than my torso, which means I have to time it correctly. Okay? Arms, body, half slide, full, pull. So if I'm teaching someone how to do this, you want to break it down to 10 reps at every position. Okay? So here's my finish. Arms. There's not going to be much tension. It's just a smooth, like a rolling pin. Out and in. My elbows are going nicely out. Okay, after 10 of those, you're going to have to do arms and body. So now you're practicing movement pattern. You need the movement pattern before you can add the power. After 10 repetitions of this, you add the half slide, making sure you have the order down correctly. By slowly increasing the length, you're allowing them to learn the proper order and slowly practice this. So that way they have the knowledge to do so. When you add speed and power to it, it gets a little bit lost in the mix. So now we're going to go full. So now it's long. And I'm driving back. So my torso, my legs, end. They're straight. My torso is in spinal position. Okay? Some of the common mistakes which Chris is going to talk about in terms of the other movements is that you're not in the correct position in the back. So you might be rounded. So you're not really engaged, which is putting a lot of tension on your back. And then when you start to come forward, you're already in this not advantageous position to get the power you want. Okay, so that's one. Another one is timing. Timing and order of processes is very important. So if my knees start to come up before my torso is over my body, how can I have tension on my hamstrings? I can try to, but look where my hips are. Okay, if I try to, there's no correct power output. Okay, you're not loading your muscles appropriately to get the most out of your body. Then another one that's commonly is you come up and you drop. So you're in this tight little ball. 
Okay? Think about if you squat, or if you do something, you always have tension in your body. If you look at me, you can't see it. I don't think any bit of tension. I look straight, but my back's rounded. Because my back's rounded, maybe I have a little bit in my in my legs to still power through it. But then when I try to drive through, I can't extend the power into my back. Okay? And then that falls through into my arms because everything is connected. Lastly, as a coach, these are things to be aware of. When I'm coming up the slide, one of the things I mentioned is that you're pulling yourself forward and pushing your hips back. So you have two opposing motions to create the tension and the torque in your body. If my hips come under, I come really high onto my toes, and now I've lost this tension in my hamstrings to drive back because I haven't loaded from the hips. So I'm already in my lay back then. And then I'm not going to get the correct timing of opening like the book with my upper body and my lower body. Okay? So best way for how I see it when I coach people or when I coached, you want to do the, the order of the movements slow and steady. Okay? Add power slowly into the next after they've gotten it smooth. You want fluid. Okay? Typically what you'll see when people begin it gets very choppy because they're thinking about it which is what you want them to do. They'll do. So I drop my back on that one but they're trying to get the correct order of them because that's how you talk to them. And then as they get better at that it becomes more fluid. One of the things that I'm roaming about is about a ratio. In terms of rowing, the sport of crew, it's a two to one ratio. When I'm coming up, this is called recovery. Okay? The length from here to here is called your slide, but the traveling up is called your recovery. That's where you're gaining your breath, and that's where you're going your slowest in terms of the movement. And when you're going back to your finish, that's your fastest, your most explosive movement. Okay? That's where all your power is coming from. And when you're doing this, nice and smooth. Your recovery should be two to one, two times slower than your drive back. Okay? So if I'm sprinting, the ratio gets a little bit closer. And that's a little bit different between the CrossFit world and competitively rowing. Well, Chris is actually going to talk about some of the issues mechanically that can occur if you're not doing the proper form or the proper processes of rowing.